Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. My name is Stephanie Haney and today is Wednesday, February 23rd. Thank you for joining us for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This is where we share the stories that you are clicking on, that you are reading, that you are sharing, the stories that matter the most to you here in Northeast Ohio. Let's start off with an update about a shocking discovery today here in the Cleveland West Side area. Police had discovered a body located in a basement. Well, we are now learning more information about that. We're learning that it was because of a tip from someone who is already incarcerated, related to someone who was already incarcerated, that people were able to get that investigation going and police were able to find that body. Police received a tip yesterday that 28-year-old Andrew Smith, who was an inmate at the Cuyahoga County Correctional Center, had killed and buried a man in the basement of his home on West 49th Street, of a home on West 49th Street. So police went to that home this afternoon and they did find the body of 41-year-old James Bennett. That body was buried several feet below the basement's floor. Now, of course, an autopsy does have to be conducted. This is an ongoing investigation, so we do not have any more information available at this time. It's a developing story. We will have updates for you as they become available. Now, if you're following all of the information about Ohio's redistricting committee and the issues that are happening with the voting district maps, Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRosa says he doesn't see it's, if it's possible to hold the May 3rd primaries on time. He sent a letter to Ohio Senate President Matt Huffman on Tuesday saying he really doesn't see a situation where that's possible because maps have not been submitted and approved in a timely man manner. This was after the Ohio Redistricting Committee sent maps to the Ohio Supreme Court twice. Both of those were rejected. Now, that second time was two weeks ago, and since then, that redistricting committee has failed to produce new maps, and they passed up the deadline step by the Ohio State Supreme Court. And the Ohio State Supreme Court had since asked them to provide a reason why they could not comply with that order from the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court is ordering them to create maps where Republicans have a 54% political advantage. That's what they say is what is the spirit and what is the requirement of the law that was passed for those maps to have that. And that simply has just not been the case. Now, there was a map that was presented by the Democrats on the redistricting commission, but the Republicans on the commission said that it was not something that they could look at. So they left that committee. They did meet yesterday with no more updates, said they planned to meet today. Today was the deadline for them to provide the Ohio Supreme Court with why they should not be held in contempt for not providing new maps. And what was met, what was met with that was a 72-page brief filed today on why they should not be held in contempt. Now, Aramani Abraham is on that story, and Amani Abraham will have that for us later today, and you'll be able to find that on WKYC.com, the breakdown of that 72-page document. But in the meantime... Something that the Ohio State Supreme Court had also previously said was the legislature sets the date of the primary and the legislature can change that date. So that is not a concern of the Ohio Supreme Court. Now here in Northeast Ohio, Cleveland police are investigating a video that was sent out that is said to show a Ginn Academy teacher in a sexual situation with her boyfriend. It said that it was sent to 200 student phones over airdrop. These were sent to iPhones. Now that teacher is saying that she is not the one who sent that video out. Police responded on Officer 15th to a complaint about this video and the teacher being sent to students and that's when the teacher said that she had heard the rumors but she did not send that video from her phone. There were several videos that were sent out. This was supposedly on February 7th. That's the information that we're getting from officials. Not clear what was on all of those videos but it's only one video that is alleged to have contained sexual material. So the matter is being investigated by the Cleveland Police Sex Crimes Unit and in a statement to 3 News, Ginn Academy said that that teacher has been removed from the school while officials investigate this. Now let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here in Ohio. Now remember, as we continue to look at these numbers and try to find ways to make them more meaningful for our viewers here in the 3 News viewing area, we're going to start looking at the hospitalizations numbers first here on 3 News. So the total number of hospitalizations right now is 1,345. And out of those people hospitalized, 281 of them are being treated in an ICU. We now know the total number of COVID-19 deaths that we've experienced here in Ohio since the pandemic first became aware, since we first became aware that COVID-19 was present here in Ohio. Remember, that's all the way back to March 9th, 2020, almost two years ago. That number is now 36,267. 
And in the last 24 hours, we've seen 1,323 new reported COVID-19 cases. Now remember, that doesn't include results of at-home COVID-19 tests. These are the official reported cases from those testing locations and hospitals and medical facilities as they come in. Now, in other medical news, the Cleveland Clinic is talking today about sugar addiction and ways to break that cycle because there's new Cleveland Clinic research that says sugar is actually biologically addicting. Now, I've heard this about other foods, but they're saying the same is true of sugar, and that's why adults on average have about 22 teaspoons of sugar each day, and that is much higher than the recommended five teaspoons. That's, that's under two tablespoons. You know, there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. So... And it's nine for men, by the way, nine teaspoons recommended for men. So that's three tablespoons for men. So here are some of the things that the Cleveland Clinic is saying to cut out your sugar addiction. It's a 10 day detox. They say commit to it. They say quit cold turkey, all sugar. We're talking white flour, artificial sweeteners, MSG and prepackaged foods. They also say don't drink your calories. So don't be drinking sweetened teas and coffees and juices. Juices have sugars in them and add protein to every meal. Here are some of the other things they say. Manage your stress because when you're stressed, your cortisol shoots up, that drives your hunger and that can fuel those sugar cravings. And sleep. If you get less than eight hours of sleep a day, that can drive you to eat more calories, which can drive you to eat more sugar. And they say if you do this, all of these things are a few more items. You can find those on WKYC.com. You can kick that sugar addiction. Now, as the Cleveland Browns come off of the 2021 season, yes, it was disappointing, but I submit to you as a Browns fan, it, it wasn't terrible, you guys. We, we won a lot of games. There were good games to watch. We didn't win a lot of games that we wanted to win. We didn't win important games, but we won some games, and it was very exciting to watch. A lot of times we were down to the wire. Of course, there were things that we did not want to happen that happened, but anyway, tickets are going up again. That's the moral of the story. For three years in a row, Cleveland Browns season tickets are going up for the 2022 season. So here's the deal. Tickets for Brown seasons, season uh, seats for Browns season tickets can cost as low as $55 per game. That's a $5 increase from last season. The cheapest tickets for the season last year were $50 per game. About about 40% of the non-club and non-premium seats will be available for $90 per game and about 95% of the upper bowl. Now, I say about half of the stadium's non-club and non-premium locations will increase by no more than $10 per game. That's including 35% of those seats that are only increasing by $5 per game. So the moral of the story here is a lot of these tickets only going up by 5 or $10 per game, but... There will be, you know, some of those more expensive seats in those pricier sections and the club sections and those premium seats that may go up more. And the Cleveland Browns do expect to sell out again with their season ticket passages packages this year. Something else that's up is the Cleveland Cavaliers ratings. According to Bally Sports Ohio, which holds the Cavs television rights, ratings for the games are up 78% at the NBA All-Star break. That's compared to last season. Now, if you adjust for the same number of games, which is 58, the team's ratings are up. 65% this season, so a little lower if you adjust for the number of games. Remember, the season was a little bit wonky because of, you know, this pandemic that we're still living with and dealing with last season. So, and even though, uh, so altogether, the Cavaliers' regional ratings are second in the NBA, and they are regularly in the top or second-ranked telecast on a nightly basis. And that's because the Cavs are doing great, you guys. It's a great time to be a Cavaliers fan. And over the NBA All-Star Weekend when LeBron James was here, he was probably feeling that vibe because he was saying that he hasn't ruled out a return to Cleveland. Now, why he told Jason Lloyd of The Athletic that on Tuesday, Substack's Mark Stein, who is a veteran NBA reporter on his podcast, he said James might be interested in returning to Cleveland, but the Cavs might not be. He said he's had conversations with people in Cleveland and he thinks it's just assumed that the Cavs would jump at the chance to get LeBron back. But he says he doesn't really think that's the case because right now the Cavs are one of the NBA's most promising young teams. And LeBron James, who is playing for the Lakers, is on a team that has fallen short of championship expectations. But when you break it all down, here's what Stein said. This is where we kind of get to the reality and the emotion of it, okay? He says, if it came down to it and the Cavs were actually presented with an offer to trade for LeBron, if they could do that without giving up any of these key young players, would they say no to that? Are you really going to say no to the favorite son in Ohio history after he brought them a championship? He said it would take serious 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 situation for Dan Gilbert and Kobe Altman to say no we're not doing that and he says he'll believe that when he sees it but he also says this look LeBron has left the Cavs twice we all know we were here for it we saw it and it was very hard for a lot of people a lot of people are not over it 
and the Cavs haven't made the playoffs without LeBron since 1998, and the franchise has never done anything without LeBron. That's Stein's words, okay? And he says they've done something now. They put a nice little team together. They're the surprise team of the league. They've got Mobley. They've got Garland. They've got Jared Allen. They've got a great future, and LeBron doesn't control the franchise. Here's a quote from Stein. When you had LeBron James in there, he overrode everything, and everyone kind of had to do it his way. I don't know that Dan Gilbert is ready to go back to that kind of life, and only Gilbert and Kobe Altman have the answer there. And that's that. Only Dan Gilbert and only Kobe Allman know what they would do if given the opportunity to bring LeBron James home. You know, he made his comments about Bronny and wanting to play his last season with Bronny. We'll see what happens. You know who might have some comments on this, because this kind of falls into the celebrity gossip world, is Morgan Wright. She's from Cleveland's Q104, and she is a TikTok star. So if you're not following her yet on TikTok, her TikTok is Morgan P. Talks. She's got over 7 million views on TikTok, 140, 134,000 followers, and she does it by talking about celebrity gossip. She talks about the pop culture news on Q104 as well, and then she took that passion over to TikTok during the pandemic and she says it's kind of blown up and it's her baby. She wasn't expecting to be a TikToker, but she is really loving it. So, as I said, you can follow her on TikTok at Morgan P Talks. You can also follow her on Instagram at Morgan P Talks and she just launched a new podcast called Morgan's Pop Talks. And that is it for your 3 News Now update today for Wednesday, February 23rd. Everyone have a wonderful day and I will see you back here tomorrow with more 3 News Now.